Hello, welcome to the Wednesday, May 19th, 2021 edition of the Sands and Storm Center's Stormcast. My name is Johannes Ulrich, and today I'm recording from Jacksonville, Florida. Xavier came across an interesting malware sample that actually manages uh, to execute JavaScript on a Windows system. This is accomplished using run DLL 32, a technique that has been around for a while, but is not commonly used in malware, so easily overlooked. And it's one of these living off the land uh, techniques where the attacker uploads a piece of JavaScript and then uses tools like run dll32.exe to execute it. The reason that run DLL32 exists is that it's able to load uh, DLL files and then execute uh, certain functions of uh, these DLL files. That's exactly what happens here. The command line parameters are first JavaScript colon, then a link uh, to uh, the uh, library, and then finally the little bit of JavaScript that the attacker is attempting to execute. In the end, the attacker then of course pivots uh, to PowerShell where most of the exploit happens. For more details, take a look at Xavier's uh, diary entry. And ESET published a report outlining some vulnerabilities that ESET found in Stalkerware for Android. Uh, stalkerware usually refers uh, to software that can be used to track a victim and this distinguishes itself by being rather stealthy about what it does. So it's not easy for the victim to figure out that the victim is actually here targeted with this particular software. What he said found was that starting in early 2019, they saw a big increase in that kind of uh, malware. But in their work that they published this week, they really focused more on vulnerabilities in these particular applications. And most of all, of course, whatever information is collected by this software is often not transmitted securely. But many of these applications also make it rather easy uh, to figure out who actually stalks the victim. The problem, of course, with stalkerware is uh, often not of the technical aspects of it. Uh, that's uh, usually pretty straightforward when it comes uh, to this kind of malware. But a lot of the human issues are really uh, much more problematic. And actually, Latrina Cherny and uh, Martin Cruton have a talk uh, that is, is scheduled for Black Hat this year that will talk a little bit more about that. And then we got yet another vulnerability in Pulse Secure. This time it's in Pulse Connect Secure and it's at least an authenticated vulnerability. So the attacker first needs to have valid user credentials, but the vulnerability can then be used to escalate uh, credentials and become the root user. At its core, the problem here is a buffer overflow and that can then lead to the attacker being able to browse SMB shares and to execute arbitrary code. Pulse Secure recommends that you install a yet to be released uh, update of Pulse Connect Secure and no timeline available yet. And the latest trick of ransomware is to encrypt twice. I guess it's better than once as long as you don't use XOR. The trick they're using here is actually deploying two types of ransomware at the same time. So it's not just one piece of ransomware that does the encryption twice. This probably also is supposed to help with evasion of detection where one piece of ransomware is being detected and the company may feel safe by having evaded that particular attack while the second ransomware is still going around the network encrypting data. Of course, many files will end up being encrypted twice once by each strain of ransomware. And if a victim now pays up, uh, they may have to pay up twice in order to get both decryption keys. And a quick correction about yesterday's uh, podcast. I sort of missed, uh, mixed up the timeline with AXA. Turns out they actually got hit by ransomware 
after they announced that they will no longer pay up. So almost kind of sounds like a revenge from the ransomware and thanks to the listeners who noted this mistake. Well, and that's it for today. So thanks again for listening and talk to you again tomorrow.